This is an update on uh, Fuji. It's taken quite a bit to get him to, to really start eating the medicated food. He still has a few of the scales raised. And uh, a few on each side of his body. I've never seen this on him, but uh, you know, it's gonna take a while for his coloration to come back, but uh, he's, uh, he's doing 80% better, you know, really, really is. He's eating, this is the stuff he's, and I'm telling you, I don't feed him nothing. I don't feed him anything, this is it. If he's eating, he's eating his medicated food and he's taking it. And if he's taking about two, three pellets a day. So he's getting his rambunctious energy back. And, you know, he's, uh... <coughs> excuse me. So that's just an update on him. He's, he seems to be doing, you know, great. Those race scales are, are minimal now, but still, he, I can see him because I know him. I can see him. I know my fish, and you know his snookle hump is not quite the same, but that's fine. I, I don't care about any of that as long as he's he's doing okay. I held the water changes after that last fifty percent. I held the water changes for now about three days. Tomorrow I'll probably do a, a fifty percent again. Keeping quite an eye on his poop. Uh, after I told you guys that I saw no more stringy white poop, well, I saw him poop after he started eating this medication really, really, like really getting into his stomach. He pooped a few more white. They look like uh, radish, baby little radishes, all white with a long stringy. So that's still some of the parasitic worms he has inside of him. And all this other stuff, the raised scales, I'm pretty sure it's like secondary infections that are attacking him. Probably something else, not even related directly to that. But it weakens his immune system and I guess there are secondary infections that come in and, and try to take the fish out and feed off of him or whatnot. Parasitic for sure. But. So his poop is, is, is quite normalized, you know. And I don't see anything in the, in the filter stream where I used to see a lot of it. I'll get accumulated there. So as you can see him following me everywhere, just see him. That's what he used to do. So I know my fish and it's just, man, it's taken, it's been about what, three weeks? It's close to a month. I have to look back at the videos, but uh, it's not an overnight thing. If you really wanna save your fish when they get something really bad, I guess every fish is susceptible to it some more than others, but it, it's, if you really love your fish, you know, you'll do it. You, you do the work, you put in the work to try to save him and do everything you can. I lost, um, my last flower horn, quite a few years back in 2000, I wanna say 2015, I can't quite remember. I wrote it down somewhere. His name was Escamoso. And he reminded me a lot of this guy. He was a little bigger than this one because I've had, a, I have him a little bit longer, but he, uh, he succumbed to something also just out of the blue and just it just blows my mind how sensitive these fish can be how strong and hardy but at the same time you know you you gotta be careful what you feed these guys so I'm just gonna keep him straight on pellets, even though he loves shrimp. He doesn't get bloodworms ever again, but uh, pellets, uh, the raw shrimp, I'm not, I'm really contemplating on not feeding on that anymore.
is gonna stick with the pellets for him. He'll eat it, so at least he'll be safe. But he, he seems to be getting better, and I'm very happy about that. And I just wanted to let you guys know. All right, guys. Have a, have a blessed one. Take care.